Just moments ago, outside the home of Rudy Giuliani that has been raided by federal authorities. Uh, also in Washington, D.C., another home, uh, Victoria Tensing raided. Uh, let's bring back in our panel to talk a little bit more about this. Um, and I will go uh, this time to Jesse Jane Duff. So, Jesse Jane, um, obviously Andrew Giuliani walking in, very upset, saying that he thinks this is all political. Mind you, I'm speaking as a son yeah, and a concerned American. Anybody, any American, whether you're red or blue, should be extremely disturbed by what happened here today, by the continued politicization of the Justice Department. This is disgusting. This is absolutely absurd, and it's the continued politicization of the Justice Department that we have seen. And it has to stop. If this can happen to the former president's lawyer, this can happen to any American. Enough is enough. The only piece of evidence that they did not take up there today was the only piece of incriminating evidence that is in there. And it does not belong to my father. It belongs to the current president's son. That's all I have to say. Any questions you can refer to his lawyer. All I will say is this. To all Americans out there, our Justice Department should be independent of politics. Enough is enough, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot stand for this anymore. And again, if this can happen to the president's lawyer, this can happen to any one of us. Thank you. I'll refer to my, I'll for, I'll refer to my father's lawyer for further questions and statements. You guys have a nice day. Can we hear from your dad? Thank you. Can we hear from your father? You know, again, not knowing what the charges are on its face, it looks and appears to be political. This is a very grand gesture by the Department of Justice. And after the experience, which was said earlier, of the American people with the DOJ and that fake dossier that allowed them to surveil the Trump campaign and the multiple attempts by Congress mm -hmm. to impeach this president, the former president, President Trump, we ne there's no way you can escape that perception. And what scares me about this so much is this is what we see happen in the governments that take over, that topple, that topple their uh, democracy, so to speak. And when you're going after the top lawyer for the former president of the United States, it tells us that you're really going after this and trying to disable the future opportunity of President Trump. You know, Bill, uh, take us behind the scenes, if you can, uh, when all of this was happening during the Trump administration, this phone call with Ukraine, because a lot of folks right now saying that that is what this has to do with today. Uh, fortunately, I, or unfortunately, I had left mm -hmm. the White House when that phone call occurred, but I think we saw the record that was developed during the impeachment proceedings uh, in late 2019 and into 2020. And really what happened was is that the Democrats ran a closed door process to ram through the House articles of impeachment to get it over to the Senate. And they also said, you know, they, they didn't want to call the witnesses. They called the witnesses, but they ran it out of the basement uh, where there couldn't be uh, full public disclosure about what they were trying to do. Uh, they didn't allow the president's lawyers to fully participate, as has happened in the past, where there was the Clinton impeachment or others. Um, this was a, a really ramshod process that the House of Representatives uh, conducted in connection with this Ukraine uh, allegation. And I think we saw at the end of the day, the American people didn't buy off on what the Democrats were trying to sell here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was a process penalty for President Trump. What we're seeing today on a day where the President Biden is supposed to be giving um, a, an address to the joint session of Congress where he's going to call for unity, I can't think of very many things that he can do to prove that unity is not an actual goal of this administration. Um, Thane, what legal um, complications could there be here for uh, Rudy Giuliani and for Victoria Tensing when it comes to the dealings with Ukraine while at the same time dealing with then-President Trump? It's a very good question, Heather. I've been thinking about this because, remember, there, what, is the, what, are, what is the FBI, what's the Justice Department, are they looking for something more than the allegations that existed in connection with the Senate, Senate in impeachment trial, mm -hmm. right? Are they going beyond the possibility that uh, uh, Giuliani was functioning as an unregistered foreign lobbyist there to lobby the United States government to fire the uh, ambassador to the Ukraine? So that's one thing. That's not a treasonous act. The second thing was, well, was he there as the private attorney for the president of the United States trying to convince the Ukrainians uh, to conduct uh, an investigation into Hunter Biden. Again, you know, as Bill pointed out, yeah. 
the they didn't the Democrats did not develop a, an evidentiary record, right? They did not give this to the Judiciary Committee to create findings uh, to give to the Senate. And then, of course, there were no witnesses. And then they just basically right. didn't have the votes in the Senate, and it gained, it, came, it ground to a halt. So yeah. is this basically Senate impeachment trial 2.0? Is that what this is? Because it looks like it. It looks like they're perhaps now trying to finally take the investigatory approach and look at the very charges that, that never weren't able to prove the first time. Right. Or do they have something else in mind? Is there something else that they would like to pin on Giuliani that we don't even know about? So, so legally, those are possibly the, the uh, implications. But, uh, Rob, the timing of this. Yeah. Why do you think this is happening today, the day that President Biden is supposed to give his State of the Union address tonight? And who knows? Yeah. Uh, it could be just a coincidence. We have no idea. What, what is interesting, though, I mean, let's say that the big thing here is, is something to do with uh, Giuliani, mm -hmm. you know, allegedly wanting to get an investigation into Hunter and then by connection make Joe Biden look bad last year as a run-up to the election. Um, what's so funny to me is that now that we have this laptop, now that Hunter has essentially admitted it is his laptop, now that everybody knows it's his laptop, I mean, it, when this all started, the allegation came and everybody said it's a fake laptop and everybody, you know, the left was incensed over this story because they didn't know what any of this was and everybody was denying that the laptop was real. Now that you know the laptop's real, now that we've seen the Tony Bobolinsky interview where he explicitly says that, yes, Hunter Biden's running around using his connections to his father, using the politics to try and get money out of countries that hate this country, by the way, places like China, which is way scarier, in my opinion, than running around doing it with his deals uh, in Ukraine uh, with the energy firm. Uh, but Bobolinsky says that's what's going on, says that Joe Biden is in on the deal, knows all about it. And to see that we're still wrapped up in the idea that the previous administration, which lost re-election, may have been trying to concoct some, some plan to uh, make Joe Biden look bad for a story that we now know is legitimate, for dealings that we now know really did happen, mm -hmm. that they wanted to ask for an investigation, you know, it, it seems like they're kind of, you know, if the FBI truly was nonpartisan, it seems like they're focusing on something that's much less important than the big story here, which is potentially the son of the president of the United States has been doing some very corrupt deeds, trying to pull money out of places, again, like China, a country that does not like us at all and has does not have our best interests at heart, uh, yeah. has been trying to pull money out of there, and it's a lot of money. And it's a lot of money, and they're using his connections to his father, who's now the president of the United States. If you flip all of these, if you flip the parties around, mm -hmm. and you do this in 2016, imagine what the storyline would have been. You know, if it was if it was Trump and Donald Trump Jr. in this situation, you know, I mean, it would just it'd be unbelievable to see the media focusing right. this much on, let's say, Hillary and her daughter or her lawyer. You know, trying. I mean, it, it, to me, it just. The stories, uh, yeah, the yeah. stories would not have been blocked by Twitter. Uh, New York right. Post would not have been forced to take <laughs> right. it down. It, it's very political. Uh, it seems so political in yeah. nature. Yeah. You know, Bob and yeah. Hunter Biden is under investigation right now, though, for taxes. Uh, there's a tax investigation going on, so yeah. at least that's happening. And where's yeah, where's the status update right. on that, by the way? Maybe that's you coming. Know? But, but getting know, so. back to this, what's going on today, I wanted to ask Bill, who's behind this? Well, first of all, the reporting about the raids today indicate that uh, Maine Justice had to sign off um, on these warrants, that there were similar attempts uh, last year, but the, the Trump politicals in the Department of Justice, for whatever reason on the merits, um, basically indicated that you don't have it. Um, now that the Biden administration is in office and they've installed a new attorney general and other politicals over there, um, the reporting indicates that they were the ones who signed off on it. I mean, what's really interesting about this is that they're also reporting that Mayor Giuliani volunteered to come in to hand everything over, right. uh, that there really wasn't an issue. I mean, usually raids happen um, when you have a suspicion that evidence is going to be destroyed. That's the exact opposite of a subject of an investigation coming forward to the Department of Justice to say, I'm happy to come in and give you what you want. Yeah, I think that you always have to look at the timing uh, behind anything that happens in Washington, D.C. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what the real reason is for all of this. Uh, Thane Rosenbaum and Rob Schmidt, thank you both for joining us. I know, Rob, you have a show to get ready I, for. You got to so make we'll me leave? Goodbye. I came all the way up here. I was only on twice. Hey, you can stick around. You can stick around if you want. Thane, thank you so much as well. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to break
breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.